Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer on Tuesday, the 20th of July. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today. I trust that wherever you are, you're well. It's another glorious day here, quite warm, quite humid. But at least it's not raining, so let's be grateful for that. Let's bow our heads now together as we, as we come into the Lord's presence. Let's bow our heads. Psalm 45 My heart overflows with a goodly theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. You are the most handsome of men. Grace is poured upon your lips, therefore God has blessed you for ever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your glory and majesty. In your majesty, ride on victoriously for the cause of truth and to defend the right. Let your right hand teach you dread deeds. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O God, endures for ever and ever. Your royal scepter is a scepter of equity. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh and alloys and cassia. From ivory palaces, stringed instruments make you glad. Daughters of kings are among your ladies of honour. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Here, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty. Since he is your lord, bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favour with gifts, the richest of the people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with gold woven robes. In many coloured robes she is led to the king. Behind her the virgins, her companions follow. With joy and gladness they are led together as they enter the palace of the king. In the place of ancestors you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore the peoples will praise you for ever and ever. Thanks be to God for his words. Now let's all pray. Oh God, we come to you recognising that we fail, our human flesh is weak, our sins are many, but we are assured that sincere confession is met by your saving forgiveness. Through your Son our sins are forgiven, our guilt is dealt with, our burdens are lifted. Through your Spirit we know your presence, our loneliness is shared, our blind eyes made to see, our love is rekindled. You and you alone can heal, restore and forgive. Your compassion and your understanding seep into us. Your wisdom enlightens us. New courage grips us. And we find your spirit at work in us, bringing together everything which was fractured by our selfishness and sin. O Lord our God, to you be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now let's quietly in our hearts confess our sins to the Lord, sins of omission and commission, the attitudes of our hearts where bitterness may have gripped us or where anger has got such a hold of us that we are no longer able to think rightly. Or perhaps we are procrastinating about things we need to do, not least to maybe release others from their sin and to seek to live in harmony and peace with all. Lord, we pray that you would have mercy upon us. So may Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen.
continuing to read through the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Today we read in chapter 14 and begin at the 19th verse. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, then on to Iconium and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith for the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. Thanks be to God for his word. And so in verse 22, today we've read uh, that Paul and Barnabas strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith. Paul's job wasn't just to make converts. Paul's job was to make disciples. It's one thing to believe, it's another thing to follow. The church today is commanded not only to make disciples, but to teach them, in the words of Jesus, to obey everything that he commanded. And we ourselves have responsibility to not only hear the word of God, but to put it into practice. Um, I think it was Dallas Willard, a great spiritual writer, who said that this is the great omission from the Great Commission. It's one thing to go into the world, world and make disciples and baptise them in the name of the Father, but the back end of that commission says to teach them to observe. A couple of things that we can think about today. Do we have a teachable spirit? Are we prepared to admit sometimes that what we think we know about God and how we should put that into practice in following him, are we prepared to know that sometimes we don't always get it right? We don't always know everything. Just because you've heard a Bible story preached on many times doesn't mean that you're any better a disciple of Jesus. To be a disciple of Jesus means to learn. And as we know, life is a long learning process not only in day-to-day -day, what we might wrongly call secular things or ordinary things, but in the school of life with Jesus, to think about how our faith in him changes the way we shop. It changes the way we read a newspaper, the way we pray, the way we build our careers, or we include people in our friendship circles. Whoever it may be, um, however we are called and whoever we're called to work, walk life with, is our faith making a difference? For Paul and for Barnabas to strengthen the souls of the disciples will have been introducing them to the word of God in Christ and inviting them to think about how loving him and knowing him better day by day can change and shape the way we live. May that be so for us even today. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together for ourselves and for our world, for those we know and love. Let's pray. And firstly, today we continue to pray as we come out of lockdown here in the United Kingdom because of the COVID-19 restrictions being lifted. We continue to pray for those who shield because of chronic underlying health conditions those who are vulnerable, those who are isolated, those who may be fearful. And we pray, Lord, for their mental health as well as their physical well-being. And we pray that they will know that they are being supported. And we pray for those who will continue to provide help and strength. And we pray for ourselves that we may rightly use our freedoms not only to look after ourselves but also to protect other people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for India and for Christians there. And we thank God that Christians are now able there to receive digital Bibles, to listen to the Bible as an audio book, which is also a great help where there's low levels of literacy. We pray that God would use these Bibles in an instrumental way to build the faith of believers in India. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of BMS World Mission amongst the most marginalised, and today we pray for those who are benefiting from BMS-supported uh, projects in Mozambique, that those projects particularly that seek to provide a more sustainable form of agriculture will build income for families and communities, and especially for marginalised women. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for ourselves now and for those we know and love in a moment of quiet prayer. Living God, give us faith to be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, to believe that you are and that you reward those who truly seek you. So may we please you and receive what you promise. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So may the God of all hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. Until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless you.